Previously on House. I'm pretty sure this is all coming down now, so, uh, well, f So let's talk about some of the issues on the outside of the house and what's really causing all our problems. You can see right here, I have adjusted some of the caulking, but this is all temporary as the caulking isn't really going to work properly in these sub-zero temperatures. So come springtime, I'm going to have to rip up all the caulking and redo it. And now that I look here, there's also some holes in here, which probably aren't the greatest things that I'm going to have to come back and caulk anyways as well. Also over here, we have an abandoned dryer vent, which is just letting cold air come in behind the insulation. And we'll look at that on the inside in a minute. Over here, you see I have removed the downspout from the weeping system and it's now kicked out onto the cement. The patio does have a slope and water does run this way a bit, but I think I am gonna have to get some slab jacking done and raise up the concrete against the house to really funnel it this way. This area is prone to flooding and that's because the drainage between the two houses right here is basically terrible. It doesn't go anywhere. So in the springtime, I am going to be tearing this up digging down about a foot and putting some weeping tile drainage uh, I think it's like plastic corrugated stuff covered with a sock membrane and that will drain all the way to the backyard where is the lowest point in any of the houses around here excuse the hockey rink I am Canadian my name is Joe and I am Canadian anyways that's some of the things that need doing out here and I have done out here and a lot of it has to wait till the springtime so let's go inside and see what needs to be fixed in there. Okay, so we're here inside. And the first thing I wanna mention is I've had the dehumidifier. It's like 30% humidity down here, which is nothing. And I've had the fan going on this wall for weeks. All these dark gray spots, they're not going away. I think they're just stains at this point. They don't feel wet. So I'm gonna determine that that's basically dry and stained. So one of the things I didn't do right is I had my vapor barrier wrap around the two by four and I had my drywall on top and I just simply stapled the vapor barrier up here and I never sealed it. What I'm going to be doing this time is building out the casement, sealing everything with caulking and spray foam, and then that vapor barrier will go under the casement and that'll be totally sealed. So we won't have any more air gaps around here. Another thing I didn't do in this corner, we have this abandoned dryer vent, which is just stuck with rags and insulation and i can actually feel cold coming in here right now and obviously that's no good that's going to lead to condensation a draft whatever in this system it needs to be sealed that leads me to just over here and apparently i just never taped this section you can see i taped all the headers and i did a i think a pretty good job but apparently i just left this section loosey-goosey so that's going to lead to some more problems right there so all in all, inside, basically, I think the only thing I did wrong was just not a good enough job. So we'll fix all those issues, and I think we'll be good. So now it's time to start working on this back wall with the window. First, I'm going to put up my moisture barrier again. Again, it doesn't get taped at the top or anything. It's loose, so it can breathe behind it, in theory, and it doesn't get attached at the bottom. Now I'm going to be framing in the wall one section right here from over here to this side of the pipe. It's going to line up with the inside of this jam. Same thing with when I do this cross piece here, it's gonna be the inside of this jam because I'm going to be adding three quarter inch pine material, building it out and extending the jam. Same thing over here, we're gonna have another stud right here and then we'll just continue on with the 16 inch on center. With this section done, the framing is basically complete. So I've got my four pieces of the window case extension, and these pieces are gonna just butt up to the existing wood around the window and extend it outwards. Now also I wanna get some spray foam underneath each piece. And because of that, this is gonna want to kind of lift up on me, and I have to install each piece one at a time. I can't build the case beforehand because everything is kinda out of square, the window's out of square, it's, it's just gonna be impossible. 
Now I thought about keeping everything aligned with some biscuits here, but I can't get the biscuit joiner in there. So what I'm gonna try is a few dabs of hot glue. I'm gonna hold it in place just after I've put the spray foam in there. So it's got room to expand outwards. And I'm just gonna line it up and just keep it firmly in place. I think after about 10 seconds, the hot glue should be good and hold everything permanently in place. There's nothing else to worry about. Then I'll just move on to the other three pieces and we'll see how this goes. So here we see the abandoned dryer vent and this I'm thinking was actually a lot of the problems. I've since trimmed this metal pipe flush with the outside here, but it used to stick out here. And when I removed the insulation and looked at it, there was so much cold air coming through here that there was drops of water hanging off the bottom of the metal pipe. And when I started, you know, to notice things, there is staining on the bottom sill here that rests against the bricks. So this could have been our problem the entire time. I'm not hundred percent sure, but it, there's good indication that this is a big part of the problem. Anyways, that being said, I can't really take this out. It seems to be uh, pretty much part of the house now. So I've caulked the outside and the inside. There's no more airflow here. And now I'm just gonna take this spray foam and fill up that void. And then that'll be that, totally sealed off. Well guys, it's time for the insulation and vapor barrier. Now I've been dreading this because, you know, vapor barrier is not the most fun thing. It's pretty finicky. You have to get a good air seal. You have to do it right, which clearly I didn't do it before. So all of our moisture issues are taken care of. As you see, it's a little bit dark in places here. Again, that's the staining. It won't dry out any more than that. So we're ready for insulation and vapor barrier. I'm going to be re reusing some of the R22 pink fiberglass insulation where I can and everywhere else I've bought in the two by six, 16 inch on center rock wool insulation. So let's get to it. And just like that, all the vapor barrier is up, all the tuck taping is done around all of the joists and all the electrical boxes. Thank you very much to my lovely wife for helping out with that as I hate doing it. Anyways, this stuff's all taken care of and I've gone around and I've felt for air leaks, any cold air coming in because that was a big problem before. And I did find one over near the air register. There was kind of a joist behind a joist and there was like a three inch gap. So I filled that right with spray foam no more air gaps. I've spray foamed everywhere I need to. This thing feels really airtight now, which is awesome. I've also started putting in some of the soundproofing up between the joists, which I need to do all of this. And when I get to the ductwork, it's going to, it's going to be a lot of finagling, but anyways, we'll get that done. Mm -hmm. 